Good evening. This is the Walpole Zoning Board of Appeals. Tonight is Wednesday, October 5th at 7 p.m. Uh, the first case we have is case number 22-4 for 140 Washington Street. This is the clock tower. Is the applicant here for this this evening? Okay. Uh, we do have a letter from the applicant's engineer um, re requesting a continuance uh, without discussion and, uh, until November 2nd and with an extension of time until uh, December 21st of this year. So could I have a motion to continue this until November 2nd at 7 p.m. here at Town Hall and extend the time until December 21st uh, at, um, of this year? So moved. Moved by Judy. Second. Second by Drew. Any further discussion? And this is just to continue the hearing. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, so carried. In voting tonight will be the five members here. Um, um, Dave is not here and Jane is not here. Okay. Next case we have is um, case number 22-22, Neponsid Village, LLC, 5 Pleasant Street for a comprehensive permit pursuant to Mass General Laws, 40B, Section 20 through 23 as amended. This is for... 24 townhouse style condominiums within seven buildings. And we already uh, opened the hearing. The zoning board in, um, claimed that we have um, uh, safe harbor from the uh, letter that we have from the Department of Housing and Community Development. And that has, uh, so that's what we claimed at the last meeting. I think a lot of people were here for that. The applicant um, appealed that decision to the Housing Appeals Committee or? To DHCD. DHCD. Yep. And Patrick, can you bring us up to date where we are on that? Yep, so, um, so the board invoked Safe Harbor, uh, notified the applicant and DHCD within 15 days of the opening of the public hearing. Uh, the applicant filed an appeal of that invocation of Safe Harbor. Um, according to the 760 CMR 56, which is the Rules and regulations governing um, DHCD and uh, for low and moderate income housing projects. Uh, DHCD had 30 days to respond. They did. Uh, DHCD found that the board had not met the burden of proof for invoking Safe Harbor. Um, similar situation that the board had with um, the Pinnacle and Darwin 40B projects. So at this time, the board was notified from DHCD on um, uh, September 27th, uh, which was last week. And under the regulations, if the board so wishes, they have 20 days to determine whether or not they wish to either file an appeal or they may, can, may take that decision and continue as is. So that would be the topic for tonight to discuss. And that's where, where we're at. So we're going to discuss tonight whether we, um, as a board, want to appeal the decision. It's sort of ironic, the zoning boards of appeal would be appealing a um, decision from somebody else. But also, um, you know, we also recognize that we have taken that path with two other 40B developments in town for Darwin Lane and, uh, and uh, Pinnacle Point. So, uh, board members, what are uh, people's thoughts on, um, we, we, we can do either at this point. Uh, just want to find out how other board members feel. Bob? Yeah, I'll start, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, I think the, the facts and the circumstances are essentially identical to the other 40B cases in which uh, the same process unfolded and we appealed those to the Housing Appeals Committee. Um, and I, I would recommend that the board uh, do the same here. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? I think we should be consistent. Okay. okay. And uh, that's also how I view it. Yeah. Um, you know, that's the position that the board has taken. Um, so, um, I, I know we have uh, council here. Um, Mr. Mackey, do you want to say anything uh, this evening? Good evening. Um, I, I fully expected you to just come to the conclusion you just did. So I've already submitted a letter saying we would like to continue without testimony, anticipating that this is not an appropriate time. Um, I'm not sure because I actually didn't talk to town council this this time around, but I presume the preferred course of action is to set a time certain to come back and see where we are again. 
Um, if that's the case, I'd ask that you set us for at least a month out. I'm sure it probably is going to be longer than that. Um, so if you wanted to do two or whatever the board feels appropriate, it's fine by us. But that's that's really all we have. Okay. Yeah. I think that's what we'll do, Patrick. Yeah. I, so if the board wishes to vote to appeal, I think the previous action that we did last time is the net following um, – following meeting it was noted on the agenda and then referenced that the case was stayed due to ongoing appeal that's if the vote if the board votes appeal if the board wants to continue we could go with a month out right. whatever the process has been again yeah. I didn't discuss okay. so what, so what we would do is uh, last time we we put it a month out and then we have another meeting where we say it's it's actually if we go yeah. there it's stayed so on the July meeting the board voted to appeal on this August meeting, the case was referenced in the agenda, and it was just noted, especially for the public that's here, that it was um, in a state of state due to the ongoing appeal. And at that point, it wouldn't be put back on the agenda until pending the outcome of the appeal. And what Patrick's saying, by stayed, it means that time stops and it just uh, sits there as it's under appeal, and that could take quite a while. Quite a while. So yes. Okay. Okay, so first uh, what we need to do is we, uh, and I think we've, the board members feel that um, we'll be consistent and vote to appeal the, um, the decision from um, the Department of Housing and Community Development on the um, Neponset, uh, Neponset Village uh, 40B. Okay. So... Um, I also, uh, is there another council here? Uh, sure, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Bill O'Connell on uh, behalf of uh, John Gass at 7 Pleasant Street. Okay. Uh, so everything stayed. Well, not yet, but, yeah, uh, yeah. but um, we'll, you, you understand what we're, we're doing. We're being consistent with the other cases, yeah. the other 40B cases. Okay. okay. I, would, I would just yeah. make one comment, uh, yeah. Mr. Chairman, about the timing of things. Because there are two other appeals pending before the HAC, um, and the, you know, as I see it, the, the legal question is the same in all cases. Yes. Um, so if, if there were to be a decision to come down in one of those other cases, that may cause the board to reconsider and move more quickly than, yeah. than you might otherwise think on an appeal. That's all I just want to point out. Just a little bit. That's kind of a similar situation I've had of town council, whether or not the board were, were to appeal. I think they would want to follow lump this again with the two previous decisions so that whatever the outcome is from the housing appeals committee it's reflected of all three cases okay. okay so that being said could i have a motion to appeal the decision from the department and department of housing and community development for the neponset village 40b so moved moved by judy second Second by Drew. Any further discussion on that? Um, should we continue to? Uh, we're just, this is just the vote to the uh, appeal, and then vote to appeal, and then the vote to continue yeah. the okay. vote okay. to okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, so this is just the vote to appeal this, and uh, we I've talked to town council on this, so uh, they're expecting this. Okay, um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Abstain. So carried. Okay. At which point now what we'll do is we will um, continue this case, um, case number 22. Could I have a motion to continue case number 2222, Ponset Village, LLC, 40B, until what do we have a date? I, I mean, I would recommend probably November 2nd at the next meeting. So okay. the, the fact that the board voted to appeal, all it would be, especially for the public, it would be on the agenda and it would reference that the fact that the case is currently under appeal. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we'll continue this until November 2nd, 7 p.m. here at Town Hall. Yep. So moved. Moved by Judy. Second. Second by Drew. Any further discussion on, on this? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So carried. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Next, uh, next we have case number 2226, uh, 278 Fisher Street, special permit under section 
5B13N of the Walpole Zoning Bylaws to allow more than one commercial vehicle within a Residence B zoning district. So we have uh, some, this is the public notice that was uh, published. Notice is hereby given that the Zoning Board of Appeals of the Town of Walpole will hold a public hearing in the main meeting room of Town Hall on Wednesday, October 5th at 7 p.m. on an application from Herberto Perez, case number 22-26, with, with respect to property located at 278 Fisher Street, Walpole, Mass. Uh, and this is Zoning District Residence B. Application is for a special permit under 5B13N of the Zoning Bylaws to allow more than one commercial vehicle. We have a few things in our package. We have a letter from the health department and the health department has no objections to the special permit request. And do we have a letter from the building inspector? We do, it's labeled as zoning enforcement. Okay. More of a message than a letter, but. Okay. It's on Carl's. Yeah. So Carl's comment is the plot plan uploaded is empty. Upload a plan showing the vehicle parking. And we also have from the um, police department, Luke Parlon. Uh, the attached plans have been reviewed for any impact on public safety and quality of life. The Walpole Police Department does not have any public safety concerns in relation to traffic in this case filed by the, uh, filed with the Town of Walpole Planning Board. I think, but okay. I think it means the zoning board, yeah. but that's okay. Okay, so is the applicant? As you said, there was also a letter from um, uh, Commissioner Crawley, a zoning enforcement approval. Thank you. Uh, so uh, from the uh, zoning enforcement, uh, it says uh, not to be used as any landscape company, uh, not to be used as a landscape company on property. If so, it will need a, sec a second special permit. So that's from uh, the building inspector. Okay, so the issue that we're dealing with tonight is just about parking of uh, more than more than one commercial vehicle on the property. So, if the applicant wants to come forward, um, or your representative, or who, I don't know who's the applicant on this. I believe um, Mr. Perez. Mr. Perez. Okay. So, if you want to come to the microphone and uh, introduce introduce yourself uh, with your name, address, and um, what you are proposing. Uh, why, why you're here? Hi, um, he's my husband. I'm Claudia. He's a reverse spread. Uh, or um, interpret as uh, he he did he can come tonight, but or English is not good. So no. <laughs> good good night, everybody. And so we want to know um, why we're here. Well. We 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 we, are, we know but we're here but so we so I, I believe it so I know you spoke to Jim Crawley regarding um, there might have been some con uh, either a complaint or something regarding you having more than one commercial vehicle at your property Correct. so under the bylaws uh, we have it's called like a table of use regulation and so it dictates uses that are allowed in zoning districts your zoning district, which I believe is RB, RB, RB um, following uh, the zoning uh, table of use regulations, it says that the garaging or maintaining of more than three automobiles or more than one commercial vehicle, um, but only where in connection with a permitted use or on the same premises except in the use of agricultural use. So it doesn't sound like you're not proposing any agriculture, you're just storing a commercial vehicle at your house? Does that sound correct? So you have more than one commercial vehicle at your house? Yes, correct. Correct, so that's why you're here. It requires, if you have more than one, it requires a special permit. Yeah, yeah. The, um, they have a um, company, so they use the truck uh, for work, and, and they um, can park there. 
for they go in the morning and uh, uh, the truck just stay in the weekend but uh, they use um, for for work okay and it's 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 only two trucks two trucks and two commercial truck and the other is um, regular. Uh, regular a regular truck yeah. okay yeah. Um, it's, um, yes okay so, so it's only one additional commercial vehicle that they have on site. So that's why that's why you're here for the. Yep. Yep. Board members. So, so and then the business is not at at that address. No. It's at another location. Just, just they use. The, the okay. Okay. Where where is the business located? At Brighton. In Brighton. Yeah. Do you have an address? Uh yes, five Colorain Street. In Alston. Seat code is 02124. Okay. Coloring? Yeah. Coloring. C O L E R I A N. Okay. Okay. Thank you. But is it like a real big business? Yeah, it's a small business, so they, uh, they, they come every day um, for, they use the car for like going back to the we work. We don't have a like, Nine like trucks, a, ten trucks only, like two commercial and, and a other personal car. Yeah. Okay. You know, it's no big business. We yeah, we start yeah. last year ago. And so. Yep. Okay. And we send a picture yep. about the person and what kind of car. We What type of business is um, that? Landscaping. Oh, okay. So <clears throat> the people that use these <clears throat> two trucks don't live with you? Uh, the, the, uh, it, it's yeah. my brothers. Your brothers. The, yeah. You live in the home at 278 and you're brother lives somewhere else. Oh, my brother live, 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 live with me. Lives with we you. Live together. Yeah, we live yeah. together and they, they use the car. So he used one and his brother is the other one. But we'll live at the same place. So who, who comes to take the trucks and leaves their car there all day and then comes back with the truck well, and leaves again? They, they use the car. So I use a personal car and they use the, 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 the commercial car. Uh, anybody else have questions? We're going to open it up to the public. And okay. Good. Okay. <clears throat> yes. So at this point, we're going to hear what um, other people have to say. So you can okay, take a great. seat Thank and um, you so welcome anybody else to have comments. We live at 282 Fisher Street. We're neighbors, side to side. I don't know why anyone will complain about this guy. I'm a light sleeper. I don't hear him coming in. I don't hear him going out. He's a perfect neighbor. I don't have SWAT in my backyard at guns to his house anymore. So that's a plus. He's quiet. He's nice. He's a great neighbor. <laughs> And I don't hear his trucks. These are not big trucks. These are, you know, little trucks. <laughs> it's not like an 18-wheeler or a five-ton or a deuce and a half. These are, these are toys, you know, four by four. You know, something like that. And I really don't see them. <laughs> and I live next door. So, saying for him, He's the best neighbor I've ever had, other than Marge, of course. <laughs> I mean, and if anyone was going to lodge a complaint, it would be me, because I'd hear him, you know? And I don't. So that being said, do the right thing. OK, does somebody else want to comment? Yes. <laughs> this is Marge. <laughs> this is Marge. <laughs> High school. <laughs> I am Madge Goodwin, I live at 286 Fisher Street. I live next door to him. 
<laughs> and they live two houses away from me. And they are the greatest, I don't really know them too well, but what I do know about them, they have fixed up the yard, something wonderful. You wouldn't even know they were there. It's, it, he's fenced the yard in. Uh, I don't know who's complaining about this, but um, they have no right because it's no problem, as far as I can say, you know. Like my grandmother used to say, live and let live unless you cause trouble. And he, he's not causing trouble. He's a perfect uh, gentleman and, you know, I can't say enough about him. He really is good. And these, these two children here are the same. I've had a few of my own. I like to drown, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hi, Mark, by the way. <laughs> this isn't on TV, is it? Yes, it, it is. is. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I, would, I would vote for them because they are great. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, uh, my name is uh, John Glosser, and I live at 268 Fisher Street. Um, so the first thing is, um, unlike these neighbors, my house is probably 1,200 feet away from 278 Fisher Street. However, my property is right next to where they park the trucks. So the first thing I'd like to say, uh, are you Ms. Perez? Or? It, it, is, address the board. Address the board. I'm sorry. Okay. But the first thing I'd like to say is I have no problem with people owning and running their own business. In fact, the board knows I own and run my own business. In fact, I designed the sewer system that connects their house into the sewer in Fisher Street. So um, I'm familiar with the property. I was familiar with the past owner. Um, and um, even though I have not trespassed on the property since, um, I have been seen what's been going on. So I think um, it's um, been um, characterized a little differently than what you heard. So um, the other thing about this is, um, you know, running your own business, I think that's sort of a, a pillar of the economic system we have, but we also have another thing that's very important, and that is home ownership. And single fam home, home, home ownership is um, very um, important. So um, when um, the Perez's first moved in, um, I noticed driving down my driveway and back that, you know, they started cutting down some trees, which is fine, you know, a lot of people like trees, a lot of people don't like trees, it was fine. Um, the next thing I noticed is that they installed, and I don't know exactly the chronology of this, so I might have it a little bit mixed up, but they installed a fence across the front of their yard and then down on top of, and I'm gonna show you some pictures and some other stuff, on top of the stone wall, which is the property line between my house and their house. And then they brought in a lot of fill and basically filled a good part of their backyard so that it is now level with the stone wall behind their house. And they also put in a gravel pad, which I didn't see the plot plan, but I'm guessing that that's where they're showing the um, the parking spaces. So um, they began essentially running a business out of their residential home. So at that time, there were numerous commercial vehicles, trailers, bobcat, materials, loam. There's still a fairly good size pile of mulch. Now, I know if you ask them, they're probably going to tell you, well, that's just for use around our house. That might be, but to me, that's akin of if somebody was a car mechanic and you allowed him to park junk cars in his yard because he says, well, I use those to fix you know, my car. I don't think that's something that we necessarily do in a residential neighborhood. If you buy a bunch of 
mulch, usually within a week or so, people have already spread it. So that pile of mulch sitting behind the fence, right up next to the stone wall, not that it's a big deal, but it's still there. So my point there is their initial intention, and I don't say they did this purposely, I have no idea whether they understand the zoning bylaws or not, but their initial purpose there was to run a business out of their house. And to be perfectly frank, if they want to know, I was the one who complained to the building inspector. The building inspector, when I first complained, went over and talked to them, called me up, John, all set, I talked to them, they understand they can't run a business, and so, okay, fine, that's good, Mr. Crowley, I, I appreciate you helping me out on this. Month, two, three go by, nothing's changed. In fact, it got more extensive. So I complained to the building inspector formally through the online per permitting uh, process. So I'm the one who complained, um, but again, I don't have any problem with anyone running a business, but I think that we have business zones and commercial zones um, where that can be done. So um, the other, um, and I'm gonna just give you a couple of things, maybe some of these are not. Um, I might not find them all that pertinent, but um, so, <clears throat> These are the plans from the Registry of Deeds. So these are the plans um, of their lot. And this plan is from July of 1896. And I only have three of them. But if you look at that, Mr. Chairman, so their lot 11 on the right side of this plan. Their lot 11 on the right side of this plan. But my point is that that stone wall Right here, it's labeled Stonewall. That Stonewall was there in 1896. And then I'll give you the plan of my lot, which is um, um, which is dated 1929. And so I have three of those. Um, and you can see the stone wall here. The, the, that's the whole plan from the Registry of Deeds. And then if you look at the one in the back, it's where I, it's where I blew up the plan. And you can see the stone wall is the um, demarcation between um, their property and my property. So there's no sort of you know subdivision from modern day subdivision that's um, how it Can I just ask a question just so I'm clear what is your lot shown on this one what number is your so my my lot is right here my lot's right there where it, oh I'm sorry yeah my lot's right here where it says Ira Fisher so you're on this side of, of yeah yeah okay. this is them and this is this is my driveway essentially okay. Okay, so now I'm gonna just give you some pictures that I took, okay? And you can see, and you'll see why. Is this, is this where you are? That's me. So. My so house is here, and, and you I have own 25 feet. A right of way, way a right of way down there. Uh, no, no, uh, I own it. It's, it's okay, not so a right of way, I own it. It's okay. 25 feet. John, so that's your frontage. Me, where is your house? I couldn't so see my that. house is here. It's got 25 feet of And I own 25 feet all the way out to oh, okay. Fisher. Right. Yeah. Let me see. Okay. Oh, sure. my house is here, okay. <laughs> and oh, I own 25 feet, feet all the way out. Oh, to okay. I saw that. This is his driveway. Got it. That's my driveway. So that's his driveway. All right. So I gave you some pictures, Mr. Chairman. So the first picture, Mr. Chairman, is the stone wall, and this is. You can see the backyard of the Perez's property. You can see there they have like a trampoline or something. It's a little blue in the back there. So that's sort of standing on my driveway, looking down towards my house there on the left side. And you can see the stone wall. And the stone wall, even though it's not perfect, there's places where it, down by my house where it's very, you know, good looking and rustic, but it's the stone wall and it's the 
demarcation of the two pieces of property. The next picture is the fence that they put up. And you can see, and you'll see it better in the third picture, they placed the fence on top. It's a five foot fence and it's on top of the stone wall. So if you measure that from the top of that fence to the ground on my property, that's eight feet high. So it's basically fence put on top of a stone wall and its height is eight feet. And then if you look at the third picture, so this is taken, I'm standing on my driveway looking over to the left. So that fence that's going away is the one that runs from my property towards the front of their house. And so the point, what I want to show you here is you can see it's a five foot fence and it's running along towards their house. But as it gets to the stone wall, it jumps up at least a foot there. And then you can see it's placed on top of the stone wall. So if you went out and measured from the top of that fence to the ground on my property, so the side I'm looking at, it's eight feet high. And then the final picture is this is taken up near Fisher Street is so when they either demolished something at their house or brought something in from somewhere else, this is what's placed now on the stone wall. On the rustic stone wall, you can see bricks, concrete blocks, and asphalt. Little piece, you know, chunks of asphalt. So usually we, in New England, we try to protect our stone walls, not cover them over with bricks and blocks and pieces of asphalt. So the reason I bring out the, the um, height of the, uh, of the fence, and again, this would be sort of an interpretation of the building inspector, is if you read, oops, hopefully I have it. Oh, maybe I forgot it. Anyway. I'm not going to be able to tell you the section now, but if you read under um, uses um, within setbacks, Patrick's going to find it for me. Uses within setbacks. Uh, maybe I have to do so. Are you looking for dimensional regulations or uses within? Sorry, I screwed this up. Fence no. Well, the point is, <coughs> oh. fences can only be six feet high within, right? You can only have a fence, maximum height is six feet. So that is a separate issue, though, from tonight. <laughs> it might be a separate issue, but they're using the fence to essentially screen their, I'm, I'm saying that's something with the building inspector. I'm yep. just saying, telling you what's going on there. So they have a, a fence that essentially is eight feet high that is, um, um, not, um, in my estimation or my opinion, not um, in compliance with the zoning bylaw. And so this, and then the other issue is, and they didn't, so there's two other issues. First of all, they didn't um, tell you the number of, of vehicles they're going to park in this parking area that they created with their gravel. So as you know, if they have a certain amount of num parking spaces, five, then you have to set that back off of, the, uh, off of the lot line, at least 15 feet and maybe 20 feet, depending on how it's interpreted in the zone and bylaw. And then finally, and I'm sorry, I didn't bring it. Maybe it's here. No. Um, Finally, they didn't go through the, any special permit criteria of why this should be allowed by the board. There's a list of criteria under the special permit um, section that uh, dictates what they're supposed to show or prove to you or, so that you can make a finding that the special permit um, can be uh, issued. Sorry, I didn't bring that stuff. Somehow I rushed out and forgot it. Right, but you do know there's a section on special permit. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. 
2.2. Yeah, we're yep. familiar with. Yeah, we're okay. familiar with what a special permit requirement is. Right. So I guess my other point would be, Mr. Chairman, is that the neighbors on the other side are all fa all in favor of this. If you move, if they move the parking to the other side, then maybe I'll be in favor of it. So I don't see any reason why it has to be butted up right against my property with an eight foot fence hiding it. And like I said, um, they were, they sort of um, pulled back from running their business, but there's still a lot of activity there that I don't believe uh, should be allowed in a uh, single family residence. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Deanna Brucci and I live at 4 Walden Drive in Walpole. I want to say that I am opposed of the parking of the commercial vehicles at 278 Fisher Street. I think that the board should consider safety. I know that the police said that they weren't too concerned about it but people fly up and down Fisher Street and you don't need commercial trucks coming in and out. Somebody's either going to get hit by a car, car accident, etc. So it is a busy street. Lately, it's a dumping ground. They're putting extra materials on their property. It's very sloppy. I think one commercial truck would be fine. I'm all for somebody going to work, coming home, parking their truck. But it's the multiple vehicles that we are concerned about. So I hope that you consider that in your decision. Thank you. Thank you. So I've got uh, I've got a couple of questions. Um, Can I speak again? Oh sure. I know this gentleman over here. Well, I don't really know him. Oh. I mean, he's on television all Back the time. Back to the board. No. But um, anyways, he would, lives about a half a mile down his road. And I don't know. He comes up that road like I don't know how the hell he sees anything. He comes up that road so fast. Well, the, I've never seen him walk on the road, and my, my house is really, I can see that road from where I live and where he, his road is. So I don't know how come he's got all this figures here that he thinks he's got. I know he's a businessman. I know he builds houses and whatever he does on television, on, on the town meetings all the time. He's always on the television on the town meetings, billing something, complaining about something. And I don't think whatever he's complaining about has, I thought Fisher Street was a business zone. It's not, no. it's residential. I used to have Mack trucks there. Okay, it's. it's the, I had those in the Mack truck business. What we're talking about, this property is zoned residential. I never had any, pro well, I'm telling you right now, if you go up and down Fisher Street, You'll see more than one, one business truck in their yard. I bet if you go all over Walpole, you'll see a lot that don't belong in their yards. And I know these people probably are, you know, not, I don't know what they're, you know, whether they're doing it right or not, but they're trying to make a living for their family and they're, you know, they're, they're hard to understand English and I just don't want to see him get a rough deal, you know. That's the only thing, you know. I'm old, and there you go. Don't, don't be smart. So one of the things, <laughs> when you just talked about, I just want people to understand what, what the zoning board looks at is not the people. We look at the property, and you could be the nicest person in the world. I am. It, you are, <laughs> right? And. And if, it's, if it doesn't meet the requirements of the zoning board, the zoning board's not gonna be in favor of it. You could also be one of the most unpleasant people in the world, which you are not. And if it meets the requirements, then the zoning board would approve it. So it has, it has absolutely nothing to do with people. Yeah, I know, I know what you're talking about. It has to do with property. Yeah, and but I mean all this, this, this mounds of dirt and things he's, he, he's complaining about, 
what he did, he, he re-dug up his lawn and put a new lawn in. And he, he, he really made the yard look halfway decent. I mean, he probably didn't realize that he was not allowed to put the fence on the wall. I probably, I guarantee that's what he did by mistake. I mean, not that I'm saying that he didn't, but you know, whatever. You know, okay. May I speak for a minute, please? Sure. Okay, I, I put the fence in the property, I'm not putting the top to the wall, I'm putting the in the back. I don't put, but I, it's no, no easy to make the holes in the rocks. I put the, the fence to the, to the other side, not in the middle of the wall. Yeah. And then my, uh, my yard is very, very low, and I want to level, and I, I have a friends to bring uh, six wheels full uh, loom. That's why I, I try to level all the yard, but it's, it's no good. I want to I wanna put like beautiful house in the back and the front. That's why they see material there, but we don't sell material, and uh, we don't uh, uh, keep material to bring in the jobs. I want to use there for my backyard and the front yard. And the other thing in the wall, I'm not putting nothing trash in the, in the wall. I put in the, in the back, no in the front, the wall. If you want to see the wall, you see the wall clear. But on my side, I know, he's, he, I don't know if he see. I put like bricks and uh, asphalt, I know that, but it's in the other side. But I can, I can remove, from, I can take it out, but, and uh, it's not easy to done the job, but quick, quick, but I, um, I have my work, and sometimes when I'm not working, I'm, I'm working at the house to, to level there, and I wanna put a beautiful house there, you know, that's, that's all, and I wanna try to put no offense there, but uh, I want to see maybe coming to get a permit, or I want to buy, I want to live beautiful there. I want to put my house so nice, but all the street, only beautiful house, and I want to do the same same thing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I, I actually have a, a question for you. Uh, on our paper, do you, do you own the property? Yes. Okay. So, um, and you did put the fence, we're not really talking about the fence, but you own the property and you, you put the fence up, right? Yes, I okay. put the fence. Okay. And I'm, I'm cut the trees. I know I like the trees, but the problems, you know, the pine, it's dangerous. When there's a lot of wind or heavy snow in the top, yeah. they, they break, yep. easy you, to break. You don't have to explain why you cut <laughs> trees. Yeah, yeah. no, we, you, you have the right to cut Yeah, and that's cut why I trees. Yeah. cut down, yeah. 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 yeah, we're just, the issue is, Com the commercial vehicles on um, on the property. That's what oh. that's what the issue. Okay. Oh, okay. That's. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. Board members, any uh, any questions? Or? Judy. I, I just want to go back over, sir. Like, the, in the morning you get up and you have a truck in your yard that you drive, correct? I just want to get the. When you get up in the morning at your house at 278 Fisher Street, you go out the door, there's a truck for you to drive away. Yeah. Commercial the, truck. The, yeah, the truck is in the parking, and I go, I go out, and I, I, I go to the house and go out. OK. Yeah. And, and then the, the second truck, you want to park there. No, we, we use the two trucks. My brother used one, and I'm using the other one. Okay. Yeah, but the truck is still only in the night. Friday to to Saturday, we, we use the trucks. Then uh, only go to 7 a.m. and come back to to 5:30, 5, 5 to 5:30 to 5. Okay, so that's one truck, and I, I'm just trying to figure out where the second truck is coming from. That the person that uses that truck. As I think I asked that he doesn't live with you. No, he, yeah. does. he does. He does. Okay. So he gets up in the morning with you, and you both take two trucks away. Yeah. But we don't have the same job. Okay. Yeah. We we cut grass, and we different place. My brother go to the uh, another uh, place, and I go to the other place, and we know go together. Okay. So yeah. so in 
So how many other vehicles are in the yard? The two trucks and your car, your, you have the black van? This is my sister-in-law's car. Sister-in-law's car. Yeah, two vehicles. Only, yeah. two, only two personal cars? Two personal and two commercial. Two commercial. Yep. Okay. The address that your the business is located five collar in 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 Alston. Yes. Is there's nowhere to put the vehicles there? I have the the street. It's a private street. It looks like a house. Yeah. With buildings all around it. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah. A blue house. Yeah. Okay. It's a Lincoln Street. In the back. In the back. In the back. They have a. Does someone live there that works for the company? Is that yeah, my 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 I go pick up my uh, my father there. Okay. In the morning. Yeah. And you can't put the trucks there. No. Okay. But my father not driving then. Right. I go, I go pick right. up him and yeah. I have a question for Mr. Glosser. Yeah. Mr. Glosser. Well, I understand your, um, I don't know if frustration is the right word, but your statements. Um, if we were to condition this special permit request, is it the fence, is it the property, is it the use of the property, the potential use of the property? I mean, I guess I'm asking you, I understand what grinds your gears, but. Um, well. well <clears throat> what grinds my gears is <clears throat> the fact that, <clears throat> you know, they, and I'm not saying that they did it on purpose, but when they moved in, it was obvious to me and to the building inspector that they were attempting and running a business out of this property. So the building inspector, you know, told them that they could not do that. And then it took them months to actually, you know, they only relented when the building inspector went back a second time and talked to them again. So what sort of upsets me is how are you going to condition this that they don't just start running their business again? And you know, putting a bobcat there and saying, well, we gotta move around the mulch in our own property. And I'm gonna tell you, take, have a site visit. It's, and I'm not knocking them. I but it is not as aesthetically pleasing, not that that has anything to do with you guys, but as the neighbors say, it's been pretty much denuded the backyard. There's no grass growing, it's gone. So, it, because it was filled in, so um, it's not as, that's what makes me think that they're not trying to live in a home and then have a couple of trucks there are a couple of people on Fisher Street. There's an electrician down on the corner. Is that Fisher and uh, Lascivitous? We're, thing we're, we're talking about this okay. property, yeah. Okay, yeah. that's my problem, is I want you, if you're gonna condition this, I, if you're gonna do this and you're gonna condition it, I want conditions that absolutely prevent them from parking anything other than the two trucks and what I would also like to see would be at a minimum to move their parking area 15 feet away from my from the wall from the lot line move it in to where the zoning that's the zoning setback in RB is 15 feet and they can move the fence in and hide the trucks behind the fence but they it would be nice if and I've actually looked at some places where people have, you know, commercial vehicles, and usually they're kind of hidden behind a fence, and then on the other side of the fence, sort of landscaped, you know, a couple of rhododendrons, a couple of azaleas, and right, we're done. I mean, I, I would agree with the neighbors, they're, it's not loud, you know, it it's, doesn't seem to be a, a problem with that, it's just a problem for me that they're attempting to run a business or in a residential zone, which, you know, clearly would require a special permit, an, an additional special permit, as the building inspector said. So 
Thank you. Thank you. So I actually think that uh, what we heard was some, actually key to what I'm looking at at this point. The issue before us is can they have um, two, two commercial vehicles on the property? Right now, they can have one. The zoning board could allow a second, a second one. We could condition that it's only one and be very clear that you, this is not to be run, uh, this is not a commercial zone. You cannot run a business out of here. And um, because as we just heard, it's a fact that you would have to come back for a special permit for a business in a residential area such as this, which I don't even think, I don't even know if we could give. Uh, no. So. It's not, it's not in a lot of use, it's right? Not, yeah, it's, right. it's not even in a lot of use. So, I understand the concern. If you allow commercial, ve commercial vehicles, the process starts that it's leaning towards commercial use of the property. But what, I'll be very clear, you, you can't run a landscape business in a residential neighborhood like this. Just come to the microphone, please. Yeah. Um, we understand this is not a commercial um, area, but I think well, that why they use the car because they don't want to spend um, um, more money to buy another car and insurance. So they they um, want to use the 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 commercial truck for so. It's hard for us if we buy more cars for park that, um, the commercial cars in a, in a park and use the other cars. So, so the thing why we use the commercial is because we want to save money and and I think that car is not it's like a truck. It's not like like a big truck. It's like a right. It's not a big like huge a, truck. Yes. I understand. I understand what you're saying. Make like a big noise. It's just like trucks. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Mr. Chair, just think one more thing. Yeah. So I understand that nobody wants to spend money if they don't have to spend money, right? We run a business. We don't spend money if we don't have to spend money. But the flip side of that is, they are devaluating my property. Granted, that is only a 25-foot wide driveway, but that is the entrance to my property. That's the first thing someone sees when they drive down my property. My brother-in-law already said to me, what is that when he drove down the property? And all of a sudden, there's this eight foot high. I know the fence is an eight foot high, but it's eight feet above your head when you're standing on my driveway. Fence running along. That, you know, somebody comes, I always look at it this way. Would you spend more money on the house if it didn't have that eight foot, if you had two similar properties and one had a big eight foot fence running along the side of it, it's probably a hundred or more feet, and, and one that didn't. I would spend more money on the one that didn't have the eight foot fence. So it devalues my property so that they can save money. That's the way I look at it. I'm not clear why he's affected. His house is far away. Um, his house is close to our house, and we and and he say it's not like big noise. So I'm I'm not clear why he's doing this. It's his house is close to the street. I, I think what he said was it's the approach to his house as he drives down his driveway, the the road there. There's a big fence. So that's why I'm saying to my husband, oh, can you put a fence? Because we want, we, we don't want to affect our neighbors. So, so we put the fence because we put, excuse me? Uh, yeah, we can move the fence to the back or take it out if he Well, that's feels. a separate issue. Okay, <laughs> so, so I think the house is much. Okay. We understand. He's yep. I just have yeah. one more question. I'm sorry. Could you identify the vehicles that you're calling the commercial trucks? Because you got one with a trailer, and then 
that to me that's a big vehicle when you're pulling a landscape trailer I, I know so um, the white truck yeah this is a commercial and this is a commercial those two and this two is a uh, personal Okay, so, so today when I drove by, there were four vehicles parked there and another car on the property. Yeah. Maybe it was company, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, we, we okay. have a, a special in the weekend. Our family come from Boston and stay with us. Right, okay, that's weekend. okay. All right. Um, so, I, I too did a drive by. I actually mm -hmm. drove in. And I, in and I saw the fence, and I know we're not talking about the fence, but I did see the fence. I also saw that there's a driveway that goes around the property so that I I, I backed, I, I pulled in and then backed out onto Fisher Street. Um, but I also, I, didn't. <laughs> I also know that the, um, that the, these vehicles can act, go around the house because I was concerned about safety pulling out on Fisher Street. Uh, I, I think that's been alleviated. Some. I, I wasn't going to go there with the second driveway because to me that's creating a site plan situation where you're. Not with a residential home. It's, what's that? It's, it wouldn't be with a residential right, it's home. Not site right. Plan for a residential no, 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 but I'm just saying, you know, be, no, whatever it, actually, it is. It, it, improves, it improves the safety of it. Right. If, um, well, I, I did sit in Walden with my flashers on and the cars flew by me with, within inches of my mirror, even though I was off the street there. It's pretty, that's a pretty tough stretch of road right there. Um, I don't know, I'm, I'm looking at the criteria and I'm seeing, checking off some boxes that this particular issue doesn't fit. Which ones, which ones do you find that it doesn't fit? Um, shall not have vehicular and pedestrian traffic of a type and quantity so as to adversely affect the immediate neighborhood. That's one that, that's one yeah, that kicks me. Okay. I find that it's, you know, the number of vehicles in, is minimal. It's not as if we're talking, um, you know, it's a commercial vehicle. There's other people that have equal number of vehicles on their property. Uh, and okay. as far as pedestrian, uh, I think that compared to the volume going on Fisher Street, it's minimal. But okay, what else? Okay, um, complying with dimensional requirements, including without limitation and lock lot coverage and buffer zone requirements. I think that's what Mr. Glosser was referencing. It's, it, there w there's not a structure impacting the dimensional regulations. So I think he brought up having a separation from the car from the fence. Mm -hmm. I think. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But, but that's. But that's. Uh, you're talking about you structures. Can park, you can park. <laughs> people have driveways right up on the property lines. Uh, so many, we know. Many people. Yeah. <laughs> we do know that. Um, shall not be dangerous to the immediate neighborhood or premises through fire, explosion, and emissions of waste or other causes. Um, I'm not saying a vehicle is dangerous, but I guess I do have to ask, what, what's in the trailer? Uh, all gas-powered equipment and tools? No, I have the mop winds to cut the grass. Okay. Yeah, I have two mop winds. Okay, no, no fertilizers, no lime, no, no nothing? I, we cut only grass, uh, big walkers, and uh, two mowings, and uh, that's, that's it. Can you just read them all, all of the, all of the requirements for special permit? Yeah, yeah. I'll, 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 can you hear me when, I, when I'm talking, John? Okay, under um, section 2B1, Prior to granting a special permit, the special granting special permit granting authority shall make findings and determination that the proposed use, building, structure, sign, parking facility, or other activity which is the subject of the application for the special permit, A, does not, does and shall comply with cr such criteria or standards as shall be set forth in the section of this bylaw which refers to the granting of the requested special permit, B, shall not have vehicular and pedestrian traffic of a type and quantity so as to adversely affect the immediate neighborhood. C, 
shall not have a number of residents, employees, customers, or visitors so as to adversely affect the immediate neighborhood. D, shall comply with the dimensional requirements applicable to zoning district in which the premises is located, including without limitation the applicable lot coverage and buffer zone requirements in section 5G. E, shall not be dangerous to the immediate neighborhood of the premises through fire, explosion, emission of wastes, or other causes. F, shall not create such noise, vibration, dust, heat, smoke, fumes, odor, glare, or other nuisances or serious hazard so as to adversely affect the immediate neighborhood. Two more. G, shall not adversely affect the character of the immediate neighborhood, and H, shall not be incompatible with the purpose of the zoning bylaw or the purpose of the zoning district in which the premises is located. I can, do you want the other set part of the section? No, no. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I think uh, you know, all of those criteria should be viewed through the lens of what we're being asked to approve, which is the parking of one additional commercial vehicle on the, on the property. We've talked a lot about the fence and about the stone wall and you know, whether or not it's attractive or not, but I don't think any of that, frankly, is relevant to our decision. Um, and I don't think that... Um, I think we can and should, as suggested by the building inspector, that be crystal clear that there be no operation of a, a business on the property, which would include not storing materials, not, um, you know, basically using it as a, a storage area for uh, landscaping materials. It's strictly to park the truck and that's it. Um, and since that's all that's being requested, um, I would agree with your sentiment that it's one additional truck. I don't think it's a traffic issue. I don't think it's harmful to any pedestrians. We certainly haven't heard anything um, to substantiate that. And, um, so I, I would be in favor of granting a special permit subject to the condition that there be no more than two commercial trucks parked and that uh, you know no landscaping business be on the property per the instruction of the zoning enforcement officer and maybe describe in more detail what's prohibited, for example, storing, you know, materials such as mulch or loam or other things on site for use off site, that type of thing. That's, uh, that's how I feel at this point, that uh, the issue is one, one commercial vehicle and very clearly this is not a, it's not a commercial property. It's, it is for um, its residential area. And you'll be back before the, you know, if it does turn into that, there's, uh, you know, things down the road with that. I have a quick okay. question. Just that include a trailer as well? You want to come up? Sure. Anthony Frucci, Walden Drive. Uh, just in regards to the number of vehicles, does that also include the industrial trailers that might coincide with the mowers and the weed boxes. So we're, we're just looking at commercially registered vehicles. Um, I think the issue and when I, I saw that there is, you know, a trailer attached to these vehicles um, and, you know, if there were trailers being parked separately, that would become a question of, you know, commercial, commercial use and storage of equipment. So, so it, it does I, is that included? I think if it's attached to the vehicle. What if it's parked? Mm -hmm. Like separate, like oh, yes, sure. separate trailers? Yard, parked, whether it's attached to a vehicle or parked in the yard, is that included? No. no. It's not a vehicle unless it can function as an engine and drive. If it's a right. trailer, it's a, yeah. Okay. But the, the question, my concern, my concern is that if, if all of a sudden you, let's, I'll exaggerate. Now there's five trailers parked there mm -hmm. with bobcats on them. Exactly. You know, and so now it's pretty clear that these are not 
this is not the one additional commercial vehicle, and it's being used as a commercial uh, lot. That's what, at that point, that's what it would be interpreted by, at least by me. And then one last question, who monitors that? Uh, neighbors can file a complaint with the building inspector, and then the uh, building inspector it, we, has the, the additional title of the zoning enforcement officer. Okay. And, and that's who, that's who goes out and meets with the people and says, what's going on here? And then if uh, it doesn't get resolved, that's when it's back here at the, uh, at the zoning board. Okay. Thank you. And I know I went into some hypotheticals there, but... Uh, I want to be clear, it's residence B. This is a residential property. It is not, not for commercial, it's not a uh, storage. I'm a little concerned. I was hoping when Drew looked up uh, Alston, I was hoping to see a storage lot over there. But it's a triple, it's a triple decker with a paved back, backyard. And, um, you know, that's, is that the is that the business address, Alston? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I am having an issue with the utility trailers, though, because I can, you know, I've had them in my own in my own yard at one time, and they they sit they sit full of things, and they they're almost like you know the pod boxes for things in disrepair. So I I really would like to. My feeling is limit the number of utility trailers permitted to be the ones that can only attach to these two commercial vehicles because you can have the small six by sixes. There's a couple of pickup trucks there. They'll have, tr you know, I mean, let's, let's call it what it is. So I, I really think when you start making use of, you know, utility trailers with flat tires, all of a sudden it becomes storage. So I, I would like to make a condition that it's limited to two utility trailers. I think we could do that. Uh, do you, as a condition for the special permit, what do you think? Say, two utility trailers and one additional oh. commercial vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. So each commercial vehicle is limited to is allowed one to have one, so they don't start trailer. stacking up behind the fence and yeah. use I mean that as tool sheds. Yeah, I mean that's. I think okay. that should be done. Anybody else? I would restrict, <coughs> excuse me, Chairman, I would just limit the size of the vehicles to a mm -hmm. maximum of a one-ton vehicle. Okay. And I think you already touched upon the storage of bulk material, mulch, uh, whatever. Anything from landscape yeah. purpose. writing this down. So this is what I have. Um, one additional commercial vehicle, maximum um, one, one ton capacity. Uh, yeah. What, one ton. Yeah, it says it. It's a car guy. It's a one, one ton. <laughs> you know, just one ton limit vehicle. it to a, yeah. yeah, what they have currently and not, you know. You don't want to see dump trucks or right. 18 wheelers in there. One ton capacity? Yeah. Okay. And no more than two trailers on the site. So um, I do have one with comment. The commercial, on. With the commercial vehicles. Yes. I, I was going to say that the Drew's comment about the one ton. I know we're kind of in the weeds. So right above. Ton. Yeah. So that, that is I, I kind of what is allowed. You're allowed to have a two ton it vehicle. It says two ton in the, the bylaw. Um, yeah. How big is that? 550 or something, I would think so. So should we go with two tons? I would be consistent with the bylaw. Yeah. Should should the trailers have anything be else? registered commercially, so it doesn't become storage trailers just sitting in the yard. Uh, yeah, all vehicles must be registered. And maybe instead of. 
purchasing one additional commercial, say two, ma maximum of two commercial vehicles. Okay. That's, uh, okay. Okay, maximum of two commercial vehicles, maximum of two ton capacity on the commercial vehicles, no more than two trailers on the site with the commercial vehicles, and finally, all vehicles must be registered. And the storage of materials. And yeah. yeah, and expressly not authorizing the operation of a landscaping business. Um, expressly not authorizing a What did you have about, uh, he said expressly not authorizing operation of a landscape business. Did you have I had the materials, just no storage of any yeah. or all types of materials for the use for the purpose of landscaping. Okay. Commercial landscape. Commercial landscape. <laughs> the landscape yard. <laughs> okay. So, Patrick, I'll go through these. And, uh, yep. Does anybody have anything else they want to add? Okay. So I think what's going to happen is you're going to get your one vehicle, but we're going to be real clear what's what's allowed. But we'll see how, how the vote goes. Okay, could I have a motion to approve? Oh, oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, thanks, guys. Could I have a motion to close? Uh, case number 2226 for 278 Fisher Street. So moved. Moved by Judy. Second, second by Drew. Any further discussion on closing the hearing? <coughs> Actually, I should ask the applicant. Yeah, I was going to say. Oh, yeah. You want to close the hearing tonight? <laughs> what do you say? Do you, the first thing we have to do is close the hearing. We've, we've heard everything from you. We've heard from the neighbors. We've discussed it. And now we ask if you want to close the hearing. You probably want to close it. Yes. yes. And we'll, yes, okay, okay, and we'll, we're gonna move on. Okay, okay, at the request of the applicant, could I have a motion to uh, close the hearing? So moved. Moved by Judy, second, second by Drew. Any further discussion on closing the hearing? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, so carried. Okay, could I have a motion to approve the special permit under section 5B13N of the zoning bylaws to allow more than one, um, to allow more than one commercial vehicle. Conditions are, one, maximum of two commercial vehicles, two, maximum of two ton capacity of said vehicles, no more than two trailers on the site with the commercial vehicles, no storage of commercial landscaping materials, all vehicles must be registered, and the final point, this expressly not authorized authorizing operations of a landscape business in the resident B zoning district. So moved. Moved by Drew. Second. Second by Judy. Any further discussion on that? Patrick, you comfortable with that? That's yeah. fine. You got it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, all those in, um, okay. All those in favor of approving the special permit, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain, so carried. Okay, five zero. Okay, good luck and wish you well. Okay. Okay, can next. You, can you get a copy of the, uh, the uh, two vehicles and the two trailers and stuff? So oh, yeah, it's going to be. Uh, yeah, so. Type up that decision. Explain it to them so you understand exactly. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll type up a decision. Yeah, okay. it, okay. it'll be in about. 20 days at the yeah, well, I less than that. Okay, so, I understood what you said just in case I forget. So, what happens is the decision gets written, it gets clocked into the town clerk, and then once it's clocked into the town clerk, all the butters are notified that a decision has been written, and then there's called like a 20 day appeal period. So, basically, they can continue what they want to do at their own risk, but anyone could theoretically appeal that special permit within 20 days after it's clocked. Well, he wants to have them okay, no, we're still on TV. <laughs> okay. So we have some uh, some minutes. I'll, I'll wait for uh, for Drew to come back. Um, thank you. Thank you.
See it stop and chop. Got some great recipes for the cafeteria. Drew gets back, we'll do the minutes. <clears throat> okay, so we have some uh, minutes to, to go through, and I'm going to take them in the the order that they are here. First one we have is July 20th. And Mr. Chairman, I had a question on yeah. uh, page eight. Um, when we um, referenced up the plan of August 14th, Okay. And was that the last revised plan that we had? Because I believe they went to the planning board and had a different date. And I just, well, I was watching, so I just want to make sure we're all. Hmm? On July 20th? Well, we're doing oh. July 20th, and you've got August oh, 14th right. as a date. So what are we talking about here? <laughs> you're absolutely right. There was a question mark. Whatever plans we had when I was watching the planning board hearing with them, they did reference an August plan, but I don't think we had that plan. No. So I think we have a little um, back walk to do. I'm not sure. You may have gotten the may have gotten the month wrong. I mean, I can confirm the date. Later. Could you just check that? Because yeah. I, 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 in my yeah. notes, I had I didn't have an 814 plan. No, no. So I mean, that might have been a Scribner's error. Might have gotten the month wrong. I can, okay. I can check that. So that that's kind of a important to the the record. Yeah. Okay, so figure out what that what that date is. Yep. Okay. Did, they, did you have anything on that? Yep. Um, so on, uh, like starting on page two and three, there's the acronym ADU is used, which oh, yes. I think stands yep. for <laughs> additional dwelling unit. But I think we need to be clear that we're talking about an accessory in-law suite and not a An ADU. Separate yeah. Dwelling unit. Yeah, I, I had that note too. When we, when I started to read it, I didn't know what it was. Yeah. Well, it's then I figured technically an accessory in. dwelling unit wouldn't be an in-law, so that's correct. correct. Yeah. 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 Um, so please take out the ADUs. Yep. And then on page nine, uh, just a clarification. Seventh line, Mr. Tocchio responded that they intend, don't intend. I think uh, strike the first intent. I think they don't intend to destroy the. Do they, oh, that they intend, intend don't, don't intend? intend? Yeah, okay. Let's stop the coffee on that one, huh? <laughs> um, and then on the last page, um, the third line, uh, Mr. Lee advised the Lorna. Uh, I think that should say advised Ms. Uh, Jaffari. Okay. Yep. And in um, the motion should be Anderson. Uh, Not second. Yes. Yeah. And then in the minutes review, um, we have a, the motion carried 400. I'm listed as abstaining there. Um, oh, yeah. So I think it should just be. Mm -hmm. And that's all I have. All right. With those, and uh, we also have, so let's just do the first July 20th. Uh, yeah. So, could I have a motion to approve the July 20th, 22 meet, uh, minutes with the corrections just stated? Yep. So moved. 
Moved by Bob. Um, can, can we get the date on that plan corrected before we vote on it? I really have a little concern that it's, it's a mix-up. I mean, it's more than just a date change was what I'm trying to tell you. Okay. Okay. Okay, so you want to hold? We can I want to hold them because I think there's, they referenced a plan at the planning board dated August 14th that they, at their hearing. Okay. But we had already approved it, so if they got the newly, and it, well, we I think it's a newly scrivener's error, mm -hmm. but I can find that correct date. Okay, yeah, just, just find that just to make sure that that's where we're sitting. Okay, so we'll, we'll hold, hold those. That. We'll hold the July 20th. That same meeting, we had a um, executive session. We have the minutes for that. Um, does anybody have any issues with the minutes for the executive session? Just one comment on page two. Uh, discussion of the motion in the middle of the page. Yep. It says a roll call vote was taken with all full ZBA members and the vote was 4-0-0 in favor. Um, so. I, I don't know. When I read full ZBA members, I thought you know it would refer to f at least five. So maybe did you just mean so those present. present or something like? That? I think we had for all full ZBA members because it wasn't a special permit that required a decision. It was a um, so the, the decision was to appeal itself. So in that situation, you didn't need an associate member. I know Mrs. Um, or Ms. Okay. Um, Coffee was not present. Okay, that's what you meant by, uh, when yeah. I read full ZBA members, I thought you meant five voting members and then there were only four. Okay, so, um, I don't know if that needs to be, I don't know if, maybe would I was the only one who read it that way. <laughs> um, would it make more sense if it just said, with, with all members, with present. all present ZBA members? Well, I, I recused. Yeah, but Ms. Tegler was it here. Just explained. Yeah. Okay. All regular members? All eligible voting members. How about that? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't like the term, but I, because you're all members, but I think that was just trying to make the, the example because during the, the, during the actual meeting itself, that was how Attorney Pucci addressed it. It, just, mm -hmm. it didn't need to be associate, it could just be standard. Yeah. Okay, standard. Then, then you're right. He did say that it, it can be just the four, the four regular members. Four regular. Uh, yeah. With all. I'm okay with it. Okay. I, Regular or full? Either, either, either full way. or, uh, full sounds weird, yeah. but uh, regular would be regular ZBA members. Uh, but I do understand that is a little strange. Yeah, yeah I didn't, word I, full. when I read it, I interpreted it a different way. Yeah. Uh, does anybody have anything else on the executive session? So what are you gonna change that word to? Regular? Regular. Okay. Anything else on that? Yeah. So, does somebody want to make a m motion to approve the minutes of July 20th, the executive session meetings? So no. moved. Moved by Drew. Second. Second by Bob. Any further discussion on that? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? You abstaining. You abstain. Okay, one abstention. Okay. Just one fast forward to August 17th. A lot of continuances, too. I just had one comment on page one uh, in the middle, where the, underneath the motion it says motion carried 400. And I think uh, Judy's name is left off of the vote. It should be. It should be uh, Conroy dash I should be added. That's all I had on it. Anybody else on anything? Okay. Okay. Could I have a motion to approve the minutes of August 17th with that one correction adding Judy Conroy's name? So move. Okay. Move by Drew. Second. And by Judy, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, so carried. Okay. Next one we have is September 7th. Just one comment. Okay. Um, 
page five. Second full paragraph and the second line. It says these changes included one way of increase to the site. And I think that, that should be access. Yep. Anybody, uh, anybody else good with that? Okay, could I have a motion to approve the minutes of September 7th? So moved. Move. Second. Moved by Bob, second by Drew. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, so carried. Okay. And then the last one, uh, that wasn't here. So uh, does anybody have any comments on these? Yes. I do. On page three, um, there was a motion made to modify the hours. There's no vote when the vote's missing, unless it's somewhere down the. Where on page three? Page three at the top. Motion. Okay. Motion by Mrs. Conroy, seconded to modify. Oh, I, I missed the uh, motion carried line. Right. Yeah, so that's right. Sorry. Okay. Yep. yep. And we voted, but I'm just saying. Yep. The, the motion carried. Good catch. Yep. Got it. So with the addition of the motion carried on that one, does anybody have anything else on, on the minutes of September 21st? Okay. All those in favor of the minutes of September 21st, first, please say aye. 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 Opposed? You know, I abstain because I wasn't here. Okay. So the final thing I have is I talked to our board member Jane Coffey today and she's going to be stepping down from the Zoning Board of Appeals after she's been on the Zoning Board of Appeals this time for nine years and previously she had been on for uh, about 10 years. Um, she took a break for a, a number of years, but 19 years of service to the town of Walpole on just the Zoning Board of Appeals and Jane's been on a lot of other boards serving the town. So. Um, I definitely appreciate all the work that she's done for the town of Walpole and the zoning board over the years. And uh, hopefully we'll have her back for final recognition. Um, that brings up the topic of we'll be looking for new associate members um, for, for the zoning board of appeals. So if there's people interested in being on the zoning board, uh, please reach out to either the zoning board, Patrick, or the select board because the select board is the people that appoint people to the zoning board. It's not an elected position, it's an appointed position. So, anybody have anything else for the, uh, the good of the board? I'll miss Jane. Yeah, we're all gonna <laughs> miss Jane, and that's what I said. But uh, she said uh, it was time. And, um, it, you know, I, I asked her if she wants to come back as an associate member, and she said <laughs> it doesn't really work like that. No, it doesn't. No, <laughs> so, that, I don't think it works that way. So, um, but very much appreciate Jane Coffey's work over the years. So. Okay, Patrick, anything? Got nothing. Good. Then uh, could we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Moved by Judy. Second. Second by Bob and Drew at the same time. <laughs> okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, good night, everybody.